Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light. What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome to another episode of Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. I'm your host for today's episode. My name is Sapir, and I head up Accessibility's nonprofit partnership team. The Spotlight Sessions is an opportunity to highlight the change makers in the disability community, and I'm really excited for today's guest. So, welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so, why don't we just jump in and can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So my name is Rachel Barnett. I'm the head of fundraising and communications for a really fantastic charity called Halo Project that supports adults with learning disabilities and autism across Surrey. Amazing. Thank you so much. And how did you join the Halo Project? Well, I've been at Halo for 18 months now. Um, I've always worked in the sort of charitable or public sector um, and was really looking for a role in a charity that was local to me, but also a charity that had a very defined geographical region within which it could operate. So that from a fundraising and communications point of view, we had a really, really clear target of who we were supporting and who we wanted to reach out to to get that support. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more about the Halo Project, the scope of the work that you're doing and the fundraising aspects? So Halo is just a wonderful charity. It actually began back in 2006 when uh, five families all had a young teenager at that point who had learning disabilities. And they were looking ahead um, to that transition to adulthood stage, looking to see what services were there. And they just couldn't find what they wanted for their children. So rather brilliantly, they decided that they would just create it instead. So Halo was actually inspired by those five original young adults, um, Harriet, Amber, Laura, Oliver and William. So their initials are how we get our names. So I always think it's a really, really sort of lovely origins story to borrow, borrow parlance from the Marvel movies. Um, and we just provide a huge range of different types of services and support for people with learning disabilities. Uh, so within our programs, we have Building Futures, and that is an extended learning program aimed at the 16 to 25 year old group. Um, three different year stages within that that people can do as and when it suits them and their level of development. But everything that we do within that program is really focused towards preparing people for volunteering, for work experience or a paid role, whichever of those might be their goal moving forward in life. Uh, another programme we provide is um, something called A Reason to Get Up. And the purpose of that is really to do what it says on the tin. It's very much focusing on people's talents and skills um, to give them something to really look forward to, to really enjoy doing. It's termly sessions around arts and crafts, around learning IT skills, fitness, about healthy living. And we also grow lots of produce on an allotment and then learn to cook with that as well. So a real range of different things. Uh, we also have some fantastic one-to-one uh, -one support workers who enable people to live in their own homes by providing support 24-7, but also enable people you know, within the daytime to either take part in our programmes at Halo Project or to go out and about sort of doing their own thing uh, during the daytimes. And then on top of that, we do loads of fantastic social activities, you know, for all of us having friends, just hanging out, doing what we enjoy doing. You know, it's so important, so good for your mental health. Um, so we provide a whole different range of things that people can do on an ad hoc basis. Many of those activities and the sessions on our programmes are really suggested and led by the people that we support as well. So we're very much doing what they want to do, what they're interested in and what they'll find valuable. It's a really impressive list of holistic programming and just going back to what you said about the origin story, uh, when you don't have the services that you need, being able to innovate and come up with those on your own, the entrepreneurial spirit that comes with wanting to provide a community and create space for these types of activities is really amazing. So 
uh, way to go to the Halo team. <laughs> Can you share an experience that you've had at the organization that's been memorable or had a lasting mm -hmm. impact on you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think for me, the really key moments are seeing, you know, people achieve things that they didn't think were possible. Um, and we had a really lovely one very recently where we have a music group and they were invited to participate in a, a huge festival of choirs and different harmony singing groups. Um, and they performed five songs, including one that they'd actually written themselves as well. So obviously that creativity, that enjoyment of music and, you know, sharing that love of music is, you know, a really important thing for all of them. And they were very nervous, you know, it was a big audience and they were so elated after they'd done it. You know, the response they got from the crowd was brilliant. And seeing that moment of achievement where they thought, oh, gosh, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I'm really scared. I'm really nervous about debuting something that I've written as well. You know, how are, we going to pe are people going to respond to that? Um, you know, it's those sorts of moments that I just think, oh, gosh, you know, if you could bottle that, that is the essence of what Halo is all about. I love that. That's such a great story. So given the population that or the community that you're working with at Halo, uh, when you hear the word accessibility, what comes to mind for you? Well, I think for me and, and everybody sort of working and volunteering at Halo, um, what we mean by it is really making sure that people have access to opportunity. You know, there's so many barriers that are in the way of somebody with learning disabilities. Um, and very often they don't need to have a barrier there, you know. So in terms of accessibility, uh, one way in which we address that is by working really closely with local employers. Um, and we do things like look at their recruitment process. You know, very often places may have a really complicated application form, which actually is, you know, far more convoluted than the job requires. So it's looking at things like that where little tweaks can happen, little adjustments that actually make something so much more available, much more accessible. Um, and and it feels doable as well. You know, it, it's taking away that level of, oh, gosh, this feels like a really big mountain to climb before I even get anywhere near the summit, you know, so, yeah. Do you have access to also educating those partner at those um, employers? Mm -hmm. We do, yes. Yeah. So, you know, we're really lucky that we work with many local groups and organisations and individuals um, who are really keen to support us. And I would say overall, you know, across the whole community, there's so many people that, that really want to get involved and help. Um, Halo's model um, is very much about people being out in the community, being a true part of their community. So um, we don't have, for example, a community centre that we deliver our services in. We use different venues, different facilitators, providers, all across Surrey, you know, the whole area in which we work. Um, and part of that is so that people get used to seeing someone with learning disabilities in their community and it demystifies it. You know, people can sometimes feel, I think, a little bit nervous that they might be about to put their foot in it. They might be about to say the wrong thing. So sometimes they don't say anything at all and then go away thinking, oh, gosh, I, I wish I had. You know, I wish I'd offered some help or, you know, I'd offered that engagement. Um, so actually seeing people out and about is really important. And also for the adults that we support, for them, you know, it's learning those Kind of pathways around their local community, both in a physical sense of how they're going to access things, but actually being used to different environments, you know, different people's communication styles, mm -hmm. how to plan their day, but also actually how to react if something doesn't go to plan and having that confidence and independence to do that within the community. Equally as important mm -hmm. and what amazing work that you're doing in the community. Um, what's one thing Going back to the comment you made about demystifying, mm -hmm. what's one thing that you wish people knew about people with disabilities? Gosh, I, I wish that people perhaps had more of an open mind um, to consider how much someone with disabilities um, can achieve. You know, all of us are individuals, whether we have a disability or we don't. Um, and we all have our own individual skills, our own talents that, you know, make us unique. And certainly, you know, taking me as an example, 
I am useless when it comes to design and artwork, but we have some of the adults we support who are amazing artists and they design the Christmas cards that we sell, um, lots of thank you cards, lots of pieces of artwork that we use as gifts for people. Um, and, you know, they have a true talent. You know, these are pieces of art that stand up on a level playing field, you know, that are, are worth people paying money for. Um, and to me, that's an amazing thing. And I think, you know, people need to recognise that we've all got those skills and talents, that special thing that has great value. And it's just about giving somebody the opportunity to, to show that and supporting them to do that. Absolutely. So on the flip side of that, what do you wish brands and businesses would do more regarding accessibility and inclusion? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think certainly we're, we're seeing, you know, some significant steps forward um, in the media. I think the way in which people with disabilities are, are portrayed is far more regular, you know, in, in terms of how often it's happening. But also it's just a regular thing as well. They're just another person who is featured in the advert, in the advertising campaign, etc. And that's really brilliant to see that growing because that's a much truer representation, you know, of our world and our societies. Um, but I think for me, um, it would be great perhaps to feel that there was more um, sort of collusion with people in the disability uh, communities actually to see, you know, what they want, how they want to be represented, what messages they want put across, you know, how they want to access a product or a service. Um, so really making them a true part of that sort of end to end journey when it comes to a product or a business or a service being advertised and portrayed in the media. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I have this saying that I keep repeating, which is when we assume we generally assume wrong. Mm -hmm. And so you have to always ask the question to get, you know, the feedback from the person on the other mm -hmm. end. You can't just decide it for them. And that usually is what ends up in that problem area. So if each person can do one little bit to make the world more inclusive, what do you think that might be? Yeah. You alluded to it a little bit, but I want to press a little harder. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say really to, you know, to listen to people, you know, to ask those questions, um, you know, to find out what they love, what they're interested in, what they'd really love to achieve, but they're nervous about it. You know, really just to have that dialogue so that actually people have the opportunity and feel comfortable to speak up um, and and comfortable to kind of get involved, you know, comfortable to have their say. I, I think for me, one thing I really love about Halo is the fact that I think sometimes when people think of a person with learning disabilities, they think of someone that has things done for them or done to them. Mm -hmm. And actually at Halo, we have such a strong emphasis on what the people we support can do, you know, how they can get involved, how they can help other people. You know, we all know that if we're able to help someone, that makes us feel really good. You know, it's yeah. so important for social interaction, you know, mental well-being, all of those things. Um, so I think, you know, that that's such an important thing to give people that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Especially with the sign behind you that says nurturing independence. That's exactly the message. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is the essence of Halo. Everything that we do through every program that we have, every interaction that we have is about promoting confidence. It's about building independence so that the people we support can live life as fully and, and joyfully as possible in the way that they choose to. I love that. Rachel, you've been such an excellent guest. Thank you so much for joining us on the Spotlight Sessions. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm always so happy to talk about Halo to everybody. <laughs> well, we're glad we could have this opportunity. And to all of our guests, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Spotlight Sessions. Please like and subscribe the series. And also you can continue the conversation with us on Instagram at accessibility underscore community. See you there. Thank <laughs> you.